program is augmented reality and first aid and what we wanted to do was build on the bring your own device theme. Uh, our learners are adult learners and you see a lot of them working on their iPads and their iPhones under the desk during class and we thought let's bring that out onto the table and find a way to use it in the classroom. So we brought e-learning in using augmented reality so we could uh, engage our learners um, more fully throughout the classroom day for first aid. Yeah, the benefits to uh, the learners have been that engagement in the classroom. We've found that uh, where there would normally be downtime in the classroom, the learners have been able to go away, do some self-exploration, gather uh, info on first aid, and the augmented reality gives us the ability to provide that information in video, audio, web-based. It's uh, just endless possibilities, so the learners have um, been really interested in the training and the feedback from them is that they've got a lot more out of the training than they would from a typical first aid course. So what we're, what we're doing with the Beam Me Out Scotty project is we're connecting regional learners from around Tassie um, with content experts um, and industry leaders to learn cooking remotely. So we're using um, high definition cameras and video conferencing technologies that are wireless so that learners can basically learn to cook from wherever they are. The um, project was targeted at Certificate 2 students, uh, bed in school students. Um, so they're a young cohort aged between 16 to 18, uh, typically all male. Um, so they're you know, well and truly uh, game players. Uh, they like playing games and so what we've done is use this as an opportunity to get them to learn through a means that they actually uh, like engaging with. What we've done is uh, use uh, games-based learning. So what we've done is actually developed up a first-person shooter style game um, to teach uh, sustainability and demolition to Certificate 2 students uh, in construction. The student goes in, takes on an identity on a construction site, and makes their way around that construction site, uh, coming up against uh, issues and solving problems uh, while trying to achieve the game goals. So what we've done is really sort of uh, matched the learning outcomes um, from the from the VET curriculum uh, with gameplay scenarios. A lot, a lot of the feedback we got from those students was that it's a much better way to learn than actually having to read uh, lots of text. The key thing that we heard the message was about paper-based workbooks and that really informed us about looking for a solution of how could we um, get the learners to access the learning, how they could um, collect the evidence and also connect with their teachers out in the workplace. Because it involved a workplace, uh, a lot of the training that's happened up in the OPY and Wirelands previously has just been with a private provider or TAFE coming in and delivering, but to actually involve Ngunnawal Health as the workplace and have them learning either in the clinic or at TAFE was, yeah, breaking new ground. Our project was entitled No Pencils, No More Books and one of the reasons we called it that was because what we were trying to do with, was do away with the workplace workbook culture that we have in our trades areas. The learners that particularly want to go into trades programs are pretty much wanting to be hands-on and get into a, a trade where they're doing something with their hands. So we wanted to do something that was interactive and engaging but still give them a good understanding of the literacy and numeracy concepts. We developed the course around particularly workforce planning um, and organisational development. So it was able to give people um, those two competencies from the Advanced Diploma of Management and Human Resources, but also create the space for them to be able to work on their workforce plans and uh, impart their knowledge, new understanding, fill the, their knowledge gaps, um, get them moving on their plans and working and collaborating with each other and with uh, other people in their own teams, in their organisations. The other side that was really useful was having one of the participants was also acted as an interpreter. So, because quite often the students were speaking in language or I would say something in English and they weren't sure about what I was talking about. So Mary would interpret and then they, you know, were switched on and away they went with what they had to do. I guess my tip for people would be to find out what type of augmented reality you want to use. There's uh, object tracking, location tracking and uh, and then do a little bit of research into what you can actually do yourselves, what programs you can use because they are quite intuitive and don't require any coding at all. It was a great learning curve for us so our most important learning was probably to plan, plan, plan. We have 
much more knowledge and um, experience now in what to plan for and what can go wrong um, and how to solve those problems along the way. I think that the most important thing is that really strong partnership um, between the different parties and, and to let the IT providers do what they do best and, and make sure that you're enabling them to be part of the creative process. We realised that the best thing to do was make sure everything was really happening and then bring the learners in at that end point so they could really have an inspiring, exciting time and they are certainly thirsty for more at the end of the project and we always want to leave them wanting more.